Hi, everybody. This is Paul Gerard. I'm a student loan consultant working with the American Dental Education Association, ADEA. This repayment module is on choosing an income plan and specifically on the key differences between pays you earn, known as pay, and revised pays you earn, known as repay. Hopefully you've seen the other modules on repayment plans, including the one that introduces you to income-driven repayment plans. In this module, we look specifically at how to choose between pays you earn and revised pays you earn. Now, once again, when choosing an income-driven repayment plan or an IDR, while we're not trying to encourage you to always make the lowest possible payment, we would suggest that if you are going to use an IDR, an income-driven repayment plan, that you consider the one with the lowest required payment. That's why we are going to look at pay and repay. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, you can always overpay with no penalty. So getting into a plan with the lowest required payment certainly helps your cash flow. But number two, if you are trying to qualify for the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, then it's to your benefit to have the lowest possible payment each month and not to overpay because that will help you maximize the forgiveness amount under the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Now, we mentioned in an earlier module, there are several income-driven repayment plans. IBR is an older plan, and the income contingent repayment plan is much older, and so we are not going to discuss those here. If you have questions about those, contact your loan servicer or go to studentloans.gov. Now let's take a look at some of the key differences between pays you earn and revised pays you earn. First of all, repay is available to all borrowers regardless of when you first started borrowing. Pay is a bit more restrictive. It is only available to new borrowers as of October 2007. So if you are an older borrower and you had some federal debt before October 2007, you cannot even apply for pay unless you paid that debt off in full before you took out another loan after that date. So once again, repay is for all borrowers. Pay is a bit more restrictive. It's only available for new borrowers or first-time borrowers as of October 2007. Now look at the monthly payment calculation. Both pay and repay have monthly payments that are calculated at 10% of what's called discretionary income, but there's a big difference between these plans. With pays you earn, regardless of how high your salary goes, you are never required to pay more than what you would have paid under the original standard 10-year plan. In other words, there's a cap to your payments under pays you earn. There is no such cap with repay. You will always pay 10% of discretionary income. There's no income requirement with repay. There is an income requirement with pays you earn. You have to demonstrate something called partial financial hardship, which is a threshold that looks at your debt, your income, and your family size. There is no such income requirement with repay. And folks, that's why there's no payment cap with repay. You are always paying 10% of discretionary income. Now look at spousal income. This is very important for married borrowers or those of you who are single thinking about getting married. Under all the income plans, certainly including pay and repay, spousal income is counted for married borrowers who file a joint return. But under pays you earn, married borrowers who file a separate return, they will find that spousal income is not required and not included in the calculation of monthly payments. So a very big difference between pays you earn and repay. With repay, spousal income is always counted in the calculation of the payment regardless of a married borrower's filing status. Let's look at some more very key differences between pays you earn and revised pays you earn. First of all, the repayment term with pay is shorter at 20 years. Repay is 25 years for anyone with borrowing during graduate and professional school, which is certainly the case for dental school graduates. Now notice the interest subsidy on unsubsidized loans. This is extremely important and actually this is one reason we think many borrowers who are recent graduates with significant debt may be looking at repay. 
Remember an unsubsidized loan is a loan like a direct unsubsidized or direct plus loan. And once again, as you know, that for many dental school graduates comprises the majority of, if not all, of their student loan portfolios. With revised pay as you earn, any time that the interest that's due each month is higher than the repay amount, the government will subsidize that difference by 50%. What does that mean? Very simple example. Let's suppose that on your student loan portfolio, you owe $1,000 a month in interest alone. In other words, you'd have to pay $1,000 a month to keep the debt where it is, not to pay it down, but not to let it grow. Let's suppose that your calculated payment amount with repay is $300 a month, which is not atypical for someone, for example, doing a GPR or a pediatric residency, someone who is a first year resident. So you owe a thousand in interest, but your calculated repay amount is only $300. Well, what's wrong with this picture? Your debt is actually growing by $700 a month. That's negative amortization. That's the word or the description for that occurrence. With repay, the government will slow down how fast this borrower's debt grows by 50%. In other words, in this example, instead of the debt growing by $700 a month, the debt will only grow by $350 a month. So folks, the way to think about this is that if you have a big gap between the amount you've borrowed and your income, you're likely going to have a big gap between how much interest you owe and what your repay calculated amount is each month. If that's the case, you're likely going to benefit from repay because the government will slow down how fast your debt grows. One more important thing to note about both pay and repay, payments made under both of these plans do count towards eligibility for the public service loan forgiveness program for borrowers who are trying to qualify for public service loan forgiveness. And don't forget, we have a separate module on the public service loan forgiveness program. As we close this short module on pay and repay, let's take a look at who might benefit best from each one of these plans. And folks, this is an individual decision. There are certainly exceptions to some of these comments. We would encourage you to take a look at your own portfolio, your own repayment objectives and your budget, your marital status, all those things as you make your decision about which plan will be best. But hopefully these comments will help. We think pay as you earn may be best for borrowers whose income is going to jump pretty dramatically after they start repayment and will substantially exceed their debt pretty quickly after repayment begins. These borrowers simply will not really benefit from the 50% interest subsidy available with repay. We also think pay may be best for borrowers who are married and whose spouse has substantial income and who need to exclude spousal income from the monthly payment calculation. Remember with pay as you earn, a married borrower can file a separate return and spousal income will not be counted in the determination of the monthly payment amount. We think repay may be best for borrowers who are single, the spousal income requirement is irrelevant at that point, or they're married but their spouse has minimal income and therefore the inclusion of spousal income has a minimum impact on the monthly payment amount with repay. We also think repay may be best for borrowers who have a substantial gap between their federal debt and income because these borrowers should benefit from the 50% subsidy available with repay. We hope the information in this module will help you as you make a decision about which repayment plan, pay or repay, will be best for you. On behalf of the American Dental Education Association, ADEA, thank you for watching this video. Best wishes for every success in your dental careers.